Hello, somebody shout hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise yeah. the Lord. Glory yeah, I, didn't, I didn't want to go longer, but sometimes when I share testimonies, people imagine it and they want to see. Sometimes I will get a call. How did it happen? Can so now I'm getting, I'm digitizing some of the archives now. I'm going to be showing you some. This was the meeting in a place called Nesprit in South Africa. You can see what happened there. I don't need to explain more. You see the ushers trying to pull the chairs that nobody would get hurt and nobody did. They were falling off and getting healed. And uh, the story I was telling, I told it over and over again about the demoniac and what God, how God healed him. Showing that God is no respecter. Of, you can see in those days, I told you for a span of 10 years, that was how I ministered. I couldn't stand by myself when the anointing would come. You could see how those men were holding me. It happened, it stayed on me for 10 good years. And when it lifted, I was concerned that the power was lifting, but God said no. It wasn't lifting. I was having too much fun, enjoying, <laughs> enjoying it, enjoying the environment of my body. That is becoming, I was always waiting for that feeling before I could pray for people. God wanted me to continue to walk by faith and still nothing has diminished. So we thank God for that. We thank God that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. Hallelujah. Amen. Pastor Vera, are you here? Yes, sir, but I can do it. Okay, that's all right. We forgive you. We forgive you because of where you are. Yeah. That was a special song it was going to do, but apparently it's still coming back mm. and looking for it. And yeah, we'll do it next time. Um, all right. Now, we, um, I said that Brother Damot started something on the the name of Jesus, and uh, that's uh, the songs we sang. I didn't tell him that I was gonna start, I'm gonna make it a series on the name of Jesus. Sometimes we've heard this name so much that we become too familiar with it that we really don't take it for anything. You know the song, brother Mount, you know the song, No Other Name. Better name of Jesus. Of Jesus. No, no other name. No name but the name, name of the Lord. Lord. Everybody join. No, no other, no name. other name, but the name. name of Jesus is worthy of glory. And worthy of honor, oh, no. and worthy of, of power, and of Sing it again. No other name, no other name, <coughs> the name of Jesus. No other name, but the name of the Lord. No other name, but the name of Jesus is worthy of glory and worthy of honor. And worthy of yeah. power and of praise. Somebody shout hallelujah. Praise God, hallelujah. It's worthy of honor, glory, and power. Yes. <clears throat> and so tonight, we want to go to the familiar scripture. I'm going to be on the, the name of Jesus for a couple of weeks. Sister Terry, are you here? Yes. All right, Acts chapter 3. Start reading from verse 1 until I tell you to stop. Now Peter and John went up together into the temple at the hour of prayer, being the ninth hour. And a certain man lame from his mother's womb was carried. 
whom they lay daily at the gate of the temple, which is called beautiful, to ask alms of them that entered into the temple, who seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, ask an alms. And Peter, fastening his eyes upon him with John, said, look on us. And he gave heed unto them, expecting to receive something of them. Then Peter said, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he took him by the hand and lifted him up. And immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. And he leaping up stood and walked and entered with them into the temple, walking. Okay, okay. that's it. Hallelujah. We know, mm -hmm. we know this story. We know sometimes that's what's wrong with the body of Christ. Sometimes we are too familiar with all these stories. That the familiarity breeds contempt. That we don't we don't really envision the relevance or significance of some of and we don't do it deliberately. We do it unconsciously. You know, we've had this over and over and over. It is something like when you're preaching about Jesus' death and resurrection. To some people, it's just like, come on, that's you know, it's an old story and something. The significance seems to be lost from time to time. But that's the key of our life with Jesus Christ. And Jesus is the key that has brought it all together. The lame man had a, a terrible problem that he had to sit at the gate of the temple. Beautiful gate, an ugly problem. There was no cure for his situation. His body and bones had been atrophied for years. Everyone in the temple recognized him, who he was. The leader, religious leaders, someone gave him offering, some did it. The common people, some responded to his, his uh, asking and some did it. And the man was there every day, according to the word of God. He's been lame for many years. But let's focus on this man just for a few seconds. The man was determined to be brought to the beautiful gate to beg for arms. That was his livelihood. I mean, he had the expectation that some people, somebody would give me something and if people were not giving him arms, maybe he wouldn't have been gone. But he had some kind of expectation that he needed to go and he would tell his carriers to take him. Who knew whether he gave them some money for helping him? Nobody knows. But this man was determined to go for his livelihood. There was some kind of determination in him. You gotta be determined. That's why when somebody's asking for money and they put this sign and work for food. And some people say they are, you know, they are pretending they are, they are not really hungry. And uh, I don't question that. I do not question that because I don't know. But what I know is that if a man or a woman could be that humiliated to come to a place where he or she is publicly asking for something, there's a, possibly a need in that family or in that man. Because the human nature is not a humble nature. You and I know that. Christ is the one that gives us humility. For a grown-up man or woman to bring himself or herself to the point of facing public shame and humiliation, asking for money, I say, if the Lord blesses you, give it to them. There's a need there. But then, people were passing by and the apostles, Peter and John, we are going to the temple. And there was something the Bible says, apart from the name of Jesus, was that they were going there at the ninth hour. It was the hour of prayer. 
I don't know how many times we will say it, I will say it, or people will say it, or I know I experience it, that if there's tendency for us to be deficient in any area of blessings of God is the area of prayer. Now, I know I'm talking to the choir now. If we were to take a poll now of how many of us pray today, at least an hour, I'm not sure how many hands would go up without indicting anybody here. It is the hour of prayer. And that was not enough. They had already prayed in their home or wherever they were. They prayed. And then they were going to another prayer meeting. That was what characterized the apostles. It wasn't their education because we know from reading this passage that they were not that educated. Because the Bible says they were unlearned men but they had been with Jesus. It was the tendency, it was the tendency, the tenacity of prayer, the preparation of prayer, the equipment of prayer that ignited this miracle. We are looking at the miracle only, but behind the miracle was the power of prayer. They had prayed and they were going to another prayer meeting. And then the obstacle came or the opportunity came to show the power of their closet prayer. When they saw that man, the man did something marvelous. When they said, the Bible said when they got there and they, they saw the man, they said, look on us. The man started looking at them with expectation. The Bible said he was expected to receive something. You know, the expectation is the breeding ground for miracles. There are so many people, they pray in the vacuum and they are not really expecting anything. Well, if it's the will of God, it's going to happen if it's not the will of God. The, what we call, the, I call it the devil may care attitude. The man was determined to get something from them. Why? Because the Bible said he was expecting to receive something. That is one of the critical foundations for supernatural breakthrough in your lives, in my life. When we pray, we expect answers to our prayer. When we pray, we expect breakthroughs. When we pray, we expect something to happen. It usually does when you put your expectation. The Bible says in Proverbs that your expectation, I think 23, 18, your expectation shall not be cut off. Your expectation shall not be disappointed. Your expectation shall not be in vain. Proverbs 23, 18, I believe, I stand corrected. It's important. It's important to walk the walk you and I are walking. It's a walk of faith. The judge shall live by faith. I would recommend that when you read your Bible, go there and read it. There are so many of them. One is in 2 Corinthians 5, 7, 5, 7. And the just shall live by faith. Say it to you over and over, over and over. I am the just and I live by faith and I expect supernatural breakthroughs from God. Because the just shall live by faith. And Jesus Christ the same. Yesterday, today, and forevermore. But the man was in for a big surprise. Though he had expected some money to be given to him, because that's the only thing I, I, we could surmise, because nobody had been able to heal a person there before. Not the Sanhedrin, not any other person on him. And they said to him, silver and gold we don't have. But such as we have, we give unto you in the name of Jesus, in the matchless name of Jesus, in the glorious, efficacious name, the name that is above every name, rise up and walk. And they heard him and he stood up and the rest was history. You see, the name of Jesus is matchless. No other name like that name of Jesus. 
Another songwriter says, say the name. Say the name of Jesus. Say the name. Say it again, the name of Jesus. Another one says, Jesus is the sweetest name I know. The name of Jesus. Oh, we have been so accustomed to it so much. We have been so desensitized to it. We have, it's become a common name. We have used it foolishly. But I want to tell you tonight, that name is bigger than any other name you and I, above heaven on earth. That not even the Hindu, not even the Muslims, none of them claim the power in their calling on their name of, of, of their gods, except that offering sacrifice and giving foolish things to their names. But this matchless name of Jesus is powerful. Because the Bible said in uh, Philippians 2, uh, God has highly exalted him and given him a name that is above every name. At the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow of things in heaven. And I was reading today to my great consternation a preacher uh, who wrote an article. I saw it, it was the name of Jesus. I just said, let me, you know how things flash on your phone. I said, let me read this. Who is sending me something? It wasn't even, it was just an article. When I saw the name of Jesus, I got interested. So I read. I read where this man said that uh, the name of Jesus is not to be used anyhow. I agree with him. But then he goes on to say some, uh, how did he put it? Did he say false preachers or prophets or they only they pray for people and they, they, they rebuke diseases in the name of Jesus. That's he called he called those people false preachers. That they rebuke diseases in the name of Jesus. How dumb can you be and still breathe? Of course, he's given us the name, even when he gave us the great commission, he said, Go in my name, you shall. You shall cast out demons in my name. You shall lay hands on the sick in my name. They shall recover. No wonder they don't see miracles in their churches. No wonder they are all, but he's a Baptist preacher and he was talking about the next episode he will write. I said, God, may God forgive you for denigrating the name of Jesus. But this man sitting here ministering, I've seen, you saw the power of God. You saw the glory. We can't make these things up. There's no way we can even manufacture it. You saw that I, I didn't even know what was do what I was doing, other than depending on him and having people help me to walk around. When the presence and the glory fell, people were getting healed. And you're telling me that these fake preachers are commanding sicknesses and diseases in the name of Jesus. Give me a break. That's what's wrong. Some churches that are supposed to be Pentecostal, charismatic, you go to their church and you don't see it. You don't see any soul getting healed. You don't even see people getting healed. You don't see people getting saved. You don't see the power and the glory of God in those manifestations of the power of God in those churches because they want to belong to the crowd. They don't want somebody to call them false preachers because they are praying for the sick. In the name of Jesus. I want to tell you that that name is matchless. In fact, it was in that same meeting where I prayed for the woman who I spoke about who uh, was demon possessed. It wasn't in the, in the session. It was in another session, but in that same place in Nelspreet in South Africa. So tonight, I want us to Turn our attention to the name of Jesus. I want us to begin to embrace it. I went to a place one time. I told them I have a confession to make. And they said, what is this? I said, I'm an addict. And all eyes opened. It was a church. They were thinking, what kind of addiction? Then I said, I'm addicted to Jesus. And they all started clapping. <laughs> I'm an addict. I'm addicted to Jesus Christ of Nazareth. That's my addiction. Because it's a matchless name. It's a powerful name. It's a glorious name. Somebody shout hallelujah. The name of Jesus. So, Stateri, I want us to see some of the 
changes or some of the things that the name of Jesus will do for us. Number one, I want to go to number one, the name of Jesus in prayer. Let's talk about our prayer life. And let's talk about that. Remember, you saw how they resurrected that man. They didn't pray again. Now, I'm not discounting that because I pray for people too. You, the Holy Spirit will give you the discernment, really, of uh, how to you know, minister healing. They didn't, they didn't go laying hands and say, oh, Jesus, heal him. Oh, Jesus, just, no. Why? They already did that in the closet. They already prayed. So they were now fully equipped with that name. Silver and gold, we don't have it in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. That's prayer. That's commanding prayer. Rise up. And the man rose up and his ankle bones received strength. They commanded him. How dare you say some preachers are commanding sickness in the name of Jesus? And then how, how dumb, even though you have a doctorate degree in theology, that's wasted time. You waste, just wasted your time going to the Bible cemetery. But anyway, Saturday, I want you to read uh, John chapter 14. We want to see the name of Jesus, the uses, the area of prayer. The name of Jesus in prayer is what I'm going to call this. Number one, read uh, John 14, verses 13 through 14. But when thou makest the thief, call the poor, the maimed, the lame, the blind, and thou shalt be blessed, for they cannot recompense. Oh, I'm sorry, that's that's not John 14. Yeah, I that was, was wondering, Luke. I was going to command that thing in the name of Jesus. <laughs> that was Luke, sorry. And whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If ye shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. All right? Does everybody see that? Whatever you shall ask in my name, I will do it. Why? That the Father may be glorified in the Son. That name is the avenue you have. It's the area you and I have. It's the only way to God in prayer. Whatsoever. Granted, it has to be scriptural. It has to be in the will of God. Whatsoever. You don't say, oh, Lord, I want to marry my friend's uh, wife. I pray that she will divorce the husband. That's not scriptural. No. That's not scriptural. The reason why he answers so that the name will be glorified in the Son. That's the avenue to pray. Sister Terry, read uh, John 15, 16. John 15, 16. Ye, shall ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you that you should go and bring forth fruit and that your fruit should remain, that whatsoever ye shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give it you. Okay. I, mean, I just want everybody... So, you know, the, the songwriter said that old, old story is ever, ever new. The old, old story, praise the Lord, is true. That Jesus died for you and was as me. Tell me the old, old. It's still old story, but it's forever new. Forever and ever new. If you shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. It's not that I will think about it. It's not that I will consult with anybody. It's not that I will check you out. I will do it. God answers prayers. And those prayers will have to be prayed in the name of Jesus. We're going to stay there. Sister Terry, go to John chapter 16, 23 and 24. And in that day ye shall ask me nothing. For verily, verily, I say unto you, whatsoever ye shall ask the Father in my name, he will give it you. Hitherto have ye asked nothing in my name. Ask, and ye shall receive, that your joy may be full. Oh my goodness. I don't know. I hope that this thing is kind of challenging somebody here on this line. 
again because so many are answered prayers. So many. God, God has not given us these promises to pray in the name of Jesus. And then it's not going to answer the prayer. Hear that though. It may up till now. You ask nothing in my name. Ask that you may receive that your joy may be full. We're going to pray in the name of Jesus. You pray in the name of the prayer that God answers. It's the prayer that is prayed through the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus to God the Father. That's the one. You, sometimes you say, people, let's pray. And they pray and they say, for Christ's sake, everybody says amen. Why are you praying for Christ's sake? Why? Mm. Why? Christ is doing well. <laughs> he's, he's doing well all by himself. Why are you praying for his sake? I don't see anywhere in the Bible here. We, we just read it. Where he say, if you shall pray any prayer for Christ's sake, I will answer. No wonder some of those prayers have not been answered. For Christ's sake, amen. And then, guess what follows up? He follows up and says, okay, you know, sometimes he says yes. Sometimes he says no. Sometimes he mm. says, I'm coming. Sometimes he's saying this. Thing. Sometimes. Then I go to my Bible, I read it. I don't see where he says that. He doesn't say it in John 16. He doesn't say it in John 15. He doesn't say it in John 14. He doesn't mm. say, he that oh, have you asked in my name? Ask. And then sometimes I will say no. Sometimes I will say yes. Sometimes I will say, get away from me. Or sometimes. You know, those things happen when the prayers we are praying are not in the will of God. They happen when it's not in line with the word of God. Why are we praying for Christ's sake? We can pray long prayers and then nothing happens. And we get discouraged. Why? Because we can't come to God and try to tell him, oh God, look what I have done to get an answer. There, there are so many people that are doing it. There are so many. Granted, you go into your closet and wait for him and pray for as many as it takes. But you just don't go and say, God, you know what? I've gone into my closet for three hours today. And now I am here for three hours. I deserve this prayer to be answered. That's not how God operates. That's not how God operates. He, he doesn't do that because we deserve anything. He doesn't do that because we put in three hours. He doesn't. He, it's not how he operates. Amen. It's the grace, the message of God. You just follow the scripture and hang in tight with the scripture. Just hang in tight and keep looking to that name and keep carrying. That we have rights, we have privileges in that covenant on how to pray in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And a, a preacher. I don't know whether it's uh, Hagen or um, I forgot the other brother who preceded Hagen. Was the one who said that Jesus has given us the power of attorney. I don't know if it's F.F. Boswell. Um, I forgot the name. But he said that Jesus has... E.W. Kenyon. Yeah, E.W. Kenyon. Thank you so much. He said Jesus has given us the power of attorney. Even though I've been a Christian for many years, I understood the implications, and I've never really, until I read his uh, book as a young Christian, understood that that was the same thing as power of attorney. <laughs> and we, we all do that. In uh, Florida, when I couldn't go to the uh, DMV, I filled out the power of attorney and assigned the rights to my daughter to go there and represent me. She signed on my behalf. She did everything like if it were me because she represented me. Without that power of attorney, they will say no. We cannot disclose your father's uh, confidential information or driver's license or anything. None of that. But since your father released you and gave you the signed paper, they looked at the document, looked at her license. She was the right person. She had the power of attorney. She represented me and did all the transactions pertaining to my driver's license and insurance. That's exactly the same thing we have. We have rights. 
We have privileges in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. We have to pray in that name. Because the Bible has commanded us, the word of God, you know, um, read, uh, I think it's, uh, what, what is it? Uh, is that Ecclesiastics? Uh, I think it's Ecclesiastics 12, 13 or 14 that says that our duty is to do what? <laughs> is to, to, to obey God and do his commandments. Mm -hmm. That's our duty. Isn't it amazing? Your whole duty. Your whole duty, my whole duty. And that's what the, our Ecclesiastes put it. The end of the matter. Your duty is to serve God and then to obey his commandment. <laughs> Summarize in Ecclesiastes chapter 2. I could read it. I yeah, have it. Read it. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Mm -hmm. Fear God and keep his commandments. For this is the whole duty of man. For God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. Amen. Did you see that? <laughs> the whole duty of man and woman. The Bible is gender neutral, by the way. The whole duty. Amen. Isn't it amazing? Now, are we obeying him when we are praying for Christ's sake? No. Are we obeying him when we, we are praying, we say, if he be thy will or not? No. No. The Bible says all the promises of God are in him, yea, and in him, amen. amen. That means that God has given his blessing to his promises. In the beginning was the word, the word was God, the word became flesh. That's the word of God. All the promises of God are in him, yea, and in him, amen. Nowhere he says, maybe he will answer now, maybe he will not answer, maybe he will change his mind. He's already made up his mind and given his blessings to those promises. You pray according to the promises. It's only when you pray out of the will of the promises and you don't even know whether it's in the word of God. It becomes problematic. It's amazing. The name of Jesus is a powerful name. The name of Jesus. I, you know, as one who has traveled extensively, I cannot overemphasize the power in that name. The power in that name where a man was uh, uh, a woman rather or came to meet him and said, I've got them with me. I've got them. I've got them with me. I've got them with me. <laughs> she was shaking, shaking. A bartender. Got what with you? Demons. Demons in Nairobi. Lay hands on her, she fell. I said, in the name of Jesus, come out. She began to throw. I said, go get a bucket. They brought a bucket. She threw out those demons. In a bucket, full, a bucket full. After she threw up those demonic manifestations, left her. The next day, guess what? She went and brought more people. She said, I know my friends who are going through this. They were not disappointed. How dare a preacher said, Your commanding tends to go in the name of Jesus? That's ridiculous. I would be ashamed if I'm preaching the gospel and saying something like that and writing it. To the whole world. We have our privileges in that name. And that's how we pray. In the name of Jesus. I'm going to give us one other thing. We use the name of Jesus. To conduct our battles. Or warfare. In the name of Sister Terry. Read Mark 16. Mark 16. And. Uh, go from verse 15. To the end. Mark 16. Mark 16, what verse, Dr. Chippewa? Not from uh, 15. 15? So yeah. Okay. And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow them that believe. 
In my name shall they cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. So then, after the Lord had spoken unto them, he was received up into heaven and sat on the right hand of God. And they went forth and preached everywhere, the Lord working with them and confirmed. Hello? You you cut out. All right. Well, she cut out. The Lord walking with them and confirming the word with what signs and wonders or signs follow. This is part of the Great Commission or the Great Commission. He told them to go. To go to all nations and make disciples. You know why Jesus hasn't come? I think the last time I looked, I haven't looked lately, the world's population was like 7.3 or 7.8 billion. And only 3.4 billion have had the gospel. Only 3.4 have had the gospel. There are still places, so many who have not had the gospel. Only 3.4 billion. So all this prayer, Jesus Christ, come soon, come quickly. Even the Apostle John prayed it. Not so fast. Because so many are going to hell if he just rushes and comes to death. So we got to be praying so that he will use you and use me to bring in more into the kingdom so they don't go to hell. And that's what he says. Make disciples of all nations, go into and make disciples of all nations. Heal the sick, raise the You shall lay hands on the sick and they shall what? They shall recover. And in my name, you shall do what? Cast out demons. In my name, you shall cast out demons. That's what we see. We see demonic manifestations. I couldn't do it in my own name. I couldn't do it in my own power. And the assurance we have is that he said, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. And the Bible says they went, and the, Jesus, they went, doing the work, and the Lord was with them. That's what we see. I always remind him when we go, you ask us to do this, the Lord walking with them, confirming his word we say. And that's what he does. He's walking with us when we go, confirming his word with signs following, or signs and wonders. We don't chase signs and wonders. But the name of Jesus is the greatest name in battle. He says, in that name, you shall cast out devils. You shall cast out devils. That's part of warfare. Because the Bible says that in the name of Jesus, every knee shall do what? Bow. Including demons. They tremble at the name of Jesus. They tremble. So when we pray in the name of Jesus, we take another step and cast out demons in the name of Jesus. Since Sister Terry was stopped, I don't know if she's back. Matthew 28, we lost her. Anybody can read Matthew 28, 18 through 20. Matthew 28, 18 through 20. Anyone? Terry is not here. Brother Matt, are you? All right, let me see if I can. Matthew 28. I can read it. Okay, please. And, and, Jesus came, and Jesus came and spoke to them saying, all authority has been given to me in hev on heaven and earth and heaven and earth. Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Amen. Thank you so much. That is powerful. You see that? All authority was given unto him. And then what did he do with that authority? He's giving it to us, the power of attorney. We are talking. Authority 
and power. We teach it in business, where we say power is the ability to influence behavior. Power is the ability to influence behavior. If you give somebody responsibility, you don't give them power, it doesn't mean anything because he or she will not be able to carry it out because people are not going to res respect it because there are no consequences. But then authority is delegated power. Jesus has given us the authority. It's delegated power. That's why when we see a police officer, when we are driving, he may be the skinniest guy in the world, with no gun or anything, he puts his hand on, everybody stops because he has delegated power. You know, if you run him over or disobey that order, the consequences will be grave. So in the Great Commission in Matthew, he says, I've given you have the authority, I've given it to you. We go baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son of the Holy Ghost, wherever is the obstacle on the way, we have the power and the authority, actually, the delegated power to act on behalf of Jesus. He stands behind the authority. We are able to do that. We are able to raise people from their bed of affliction. We are able. A woman who had been bedridden, bedridden, for years, but was very fat woman who had actually um, was carried on a stretcher. When you begin to pray for the sick, God will stretch your faith because if you look at those things in the natural, it's gonna you're gonna be intimidated by them. You're gonna just try to withdraw something, but you stand on that authority that is giving you in the place where He's giving you the power of attorney. You stand on that place, God would supernaturally strengthen your faith. I was there, I remember, that meeting. The brother trying to interrupt me. I was praying for her, I said, put her down. Not in uh, arrogance or anything. I was following the lead of the Holy Spirit. I said, put her down. They laid her down. And when I start praying for people, I turned around to go towards her. She stood up. I didn't even pray for her. She stood up and was walking to the chair and the whole place exploded. In the name of Jesus. Get up. She stood up and walked to a chair. Something she's never done for more than 15 years. There's power in that name. You have to walk. It's not, listen, it's not reserved for evangelists. No, don't let those evangelists come take all your money and tell you if we give them all money, God will do. It's not reserved for them. I'm one of them. I used to be a pastor too. It's not reserved for pastors. It's reserved for any available and willing vessel. He says, go into all the world and make disciples of all nations. He didn't say apostles only go and uh, evangelists only go and it was going to work. No. I wasn't an apostle or an evangelist or anything when I started obeying this great commission as a young man, almost a teenager. We would go and have crusades in the villages. Then in the name of Jesus, somebody will have an ulcer. In the name of Jesus, he will go to the bathroom and pee and come back and say the pain was gone. Nobody touched it. When I was beginning, the ministry was beginning as a young man. I was so naive, but we go back and just thought, well, you know, it was supposed to be until I started pursuing God. When I read the Bible, I realized nobody has monopoly to the power of God. Nobody. It's available to everyone, teachers, school, whatever you are. Nobody has monopoly. The name of Jesus will do wonders. Okay, sister, read again. Read Matthew 18, 18 19, and 20. Matthew 18, verses 19 and 20. We're going to try to round it up. I'll continue here next time. Matthew 18, 19 and 20. Matthew 18, 19 and 20. Yes. 
Again, I say to you that if two of you agree on earth concerning anything that they ask, it will be done for them by my Father in heaven. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, I am there in the midst of them. Thank you so much. Who, who is it? Please, uh, um, I want to recognize you. What's your name? This is Kristen. Okay, Kristen, God bless you so much for stepping in. Yeah, you see, you see what's happening here. Sometimes when we read this, we don't even think about it. If any two of you shall agree on touching anything they ask for, it shall be done. Why? Because when two or three are gathered in my name, I am there. That's why. It's not because two people are just in agreement. That's not even, it's not because two people are in agreement. It's because of the third person coming into that agreement. If any two of you shall agree as touching anything they ask for, it, it shall be done. Why? Because when two or three are gathered in my name, I am there in their midst. Somebody shout hallelujah. Praise God. Jesus is just like he's here now. So anytime you are in agreement next time with a brother or a sister, remember to remember to reflect on the entire passage from 19 to 20, not just when two or three are gathered, when two or, if any two of you shall agree on anything shall be done. Most people, that's where we stop. No. That's why the prayers, they are not as powerful. Also, we don't reflect on the third person. The reason why is that the third person is coming because of the agreement of the two who are there. Because I am there. I want to make you tonight to become Jesus conscious in your work with God. I don't care how long you've been a Christian. Become a Jesus conscious Christian. Your life will no longer be the same. Because that's where it begins and that's where it ends. We were in London several years ago. Bless her heart, he said. I saw the pastor came, came to brother Benga. I said, I'm, I'm, I'm going. Pastor Felix. Here was a Muslim woman. I didn't know. It was after the fact. It was a Muslim woman walking into the auditorium in East London where the meeting was uh, conducted. She was walking in. I was closing, but I began to call the conditions of people. This woman came, as she was walking in, her condition was called. Before she could get to me to pray for her, she fell. I didn't get to touch her. And she was on the floor for a long time. I prayed for other people. And then Pastor Felix said, we got to go and come for the evening session. When you have a meeting in England and you have morning and evening session, you, your meeting is blessed. Because a lot of people in England, in London especially, they don't, they don't care for the name of for Jesus or Christianity. You go to cathedrals are uh, empty. Even though granted there are very few Pentecostal churches doing well. So we are leaving. And after we, we were on our way, we had somebody running after us. And she came. She introduced herself to Pastor Felix. She said, I'm a Muslim woman. And I've been going through some incurable sickness. She didn't tell us what, and I don't care. She said, we've tried everything. And somebody told me to go to that Christian church that an evangelist was coming and that God would perhaps heal her. She said, if I go to the God of the Christians, and if the God of the Christians heals me, I'm going to become a Christian. She's from one of the Middle Eastern uh, countries. So she said, but as I was coming in, she was telling Pastor Felix, I was there listening. As I was coming in, I felt like somebody poured hot water on me. I was on the floor in heat. But after I, I got up, got myself, I checked myself. The pain that I used to have for many years associated with that sickness was gone completely. 
So she was asking Pastor Felix, what is it that happened to me? Just happened. Pastor Felix explained that Jesus, Jesus had just healed you. And that was the anointing of God on you. She went on her knees and said, uh, as long as I live, I will serve the God of the Christians. And that was how the whole thing ended. Jesus healed her. Completely healed by the power of God. And then, months later, this young lady, without consulting with Pastor Felix or anybody, went to the police station and surrendered. Handed herself over. They asked her why, what's going on? She said, I am here under a false pretense. I am using somebody's identity to work. I'm a Christian now. I have a conviction. I'm doing the wrong thing. I'm reporting myself. She was arrested. I'm put in prison or jail, whatever it is. They were going to deport her to the country of origin. She said, if you deport me, I'm a Muslim. I was a Muslim woman. My family will execute me because I'm a Christian now. And I know I've already told them, if you guys deport me, I'm going to be executed. They said, no, you broke our law. We don't care what happens to you. Whether you're executed or not, that's your business. And they were determined to deport her. And while she was in jail, she began to pray. And he said the Spirit told her, to George, George W. Bush was the president. The Lord told her, according to her story, to petition the United States government for political asylum. And she said that's what she did. She petitioned. George W. was the president at that time. Immigration was not what it is now. And, you know, and months after that, she was granted political asylum to the United. I don't know where she is now. I wish maybe she gets this on YouTube. She will reconnect with me. I lost contact. She came here. She's still in this country. God delivered her. Matchless name of Jesus Christ. Powerful name of Jesus Christ. The name that is above everything. The name you call on him. He will answer. Never you from now on pray too long prayers and talk about all this blah, 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 blah. No. Pray your prayer and end your prayer in the name of Jesus. When I was a pastor in Louisiana, there was an invitation from the White House with the Assemblies of God. Cross section of us were invited to come. But there was one, one stipulation. <coughs> The stipulation is you will not pray in the name of Jesus. I was in the White House. I forgot who was the president there. You will not pray in the name of Jesus. You can come and pray if you pray. And just and so many people are doing it to so football games. I see some so-called chaplain. They pray. They don't put in the name of Jesus. They say in the name of God. Because they are afraid that non-Christian son. You see, people don't care when you say in the name of God because God could mean anything. But only when you say the name of Jesus, all hell starts breaking loose. So I declined the invitation. I wasn't that hungry to go to the White House at the expense of my relationship with Jesus Christ. I declined. So many other preachers went. It's a powerful name. I pray that God will rekindle that name in your spirit, that you will stand up begin to rebuke infirmities in the name of Jesus. Don't listen to these Baptist preachers. You pray a right, God will answer. And maybe the next time in between, I mean, teach on these 12 strong men of the Bible so you know how to attack the strong men or I will just continue along this line. I'll just see what happens next time. Jesus is the sweetest name I know. For he just is the same, if you know he's thinking, as his loveliness, that is the reason why I love him so. 
Oh, Jesus. Oh, sing it. I'm addicted to him. Jesus, you're the sweetest. That is our Oh, Jesus. One more time, everybody. Come on, Jesus. Jesus. And that is the reason. In sickness. Jesus, 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 for your joy, for his chance, and his love, that is that. I love you so. Sweet Jesus, sweet Jesus, what a wonderful you are. You are my precious you are much better. Everybody sing it again, sweet Jesus. What I want to you are much precious you see when jesus power is ignited in your Life, it takes away fear. It takes away fear. It takes away. Mm -hmm. That's the number one thing that will disappear from your life. It doesn't disappear forever because it's a constantly abiding. Constantly abiding. Jesus is mine. Constantly abiding. Glory divine. He will never leave me. Whispers, you're so kind. He will never leave me. Jesus is, is constantly abiding. You continue. You continue to push. I'm telling you, there are many treasures that should be opened in your lives that have not been opened yet because Jesus has not taken a center stage in your life. Let him take a center stage in your life. Let him be the one that you call on in the time of calamity. Call on him. Call on him. Call on him because he said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. That's why he's sending us. And that's why we believe him and we are going and we have seen his hand that is not forsaking us. He says, Lo, I am with you always. Lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. When we pastored in Abundant, Louisiana, I used to tell them that was the end of the world for Louisiana. But Jesus was there doing miracles. He was there. Doing miracles. Giving us revelations. Power to move. So I recommend him tonight to you. Afresh. Anew. When you wake up before you go to bed. 
Go to Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Render your prayers in his name. In his name. And it's going to work out for you. He is still alive. I will continue to be alive forever and ever. Jesus is the sweetest name I know. I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Father, we thank you. We honor you for your people. We give you the glory. Oh God. Because there are people who are going through challenges of life. There are people who are coming. There are people who are going into it. But regardless of where we are, of what we are facing now, one thing we know is you're faithful and you're truthful and you're powerful. We can pray in your name because you've given us the power of attorney to pray in your name. You're going to answer that prayer. We're not going to go pray like people who are unsure of whether you're going to answer this or not. No. He said, whatsoever you shall ask in my name. He doesn't say, I may do it or I may consider it. He said, I will do it. That your name will be glorified in the Son. We want our neighbors to see the glory of God. Forgive us of the time we have come to present our righteousness. And tell you, oh, we've done this and that. Why haven't you done this? Because we pray this. We've uh, come. We, we don't deserve anything. We know that. Forgive, forgive us. Forgive us. Help us. Our focus is in you. In you we live. In you we move. And in you we have our being. Thank you tonight for these precious people. Whatever challenges everybody is facing. You are more than the challenge. You are bigger than the challenge. I pray that our spirits today will be reignited. The fire of God will reignite us so we become more sensitive to the name of Jesus. I know there's no ladder we cannot climb standing on that authority of the word and the name of Jesus Christ.